Hey guys, Tony, Circle Nation. The DNC disappointed me. The Democratic National Convention disappointed me. I feel like there could have been more to represent the American people and more to signify that we're the party that people should trust to lead this country. But they failed, and I feel like that failure is part of the fact that there's a lot of people in the Democratic Party who just failed to reach the expectations that a lot of people would like to set on politicians. And with that, I've made my, my own litmus test, and I wanted to go over it and talk about why I thought about, why I thought these five things deserve to be in this list. So with that, number five, money out of politics. If a politician doesn't support getting money out of politics and isn't making an effort to propose legislation to get money out of politics, then I don't think anybody should support that candidate. Because if somebody isn't against money in politics, then that person is for special interest money. And I I think that's one of the simplest ways to put it. I'm sure somebody out else can make it a lot simpler, but if you're collecting special interest money, then you are special interest at the end of the day. So number four, a Green New Deal. If you're not supporting legislation to um, combat the destructive nature that we've set on ourselves to, to kind of turn back the clock and the damage that we've already done, then that politician doesn't need to be supported. There's already enough politicians in here that don't believe that we should do anything about it. But when there's, um, the vast majority of scientists say that, Climate change is something that is man-made and that we need to do something about. I don't see, um, I don't see any way around it. I, I don't see, um, I don't see an alternative than just facing the situation as it is and trying to look for alternative resources and a different way of conducting ourselves. Um, number three, medical marijuana. If a politician isn't at least supporting medical marijuana, then I don't believe that politicians should be supported in any way. Um, it's one thing if somebody wants to be kind of um, hesitant to support recreational marijuana, even though I kind of feel like that's outdated as of today, too. But with medical marijuana, that's, that's something that can save lives, has saved lives, and um, will save lives in the future. And there's been stories or there's, there's been, um, there's been accounts where children have died because of lack of access to medical marijuana. And I know the first person persons think the first thing somebody thinks is, I don't know about the idea of giving a child marijuana, even for medical purposes. But in this situation, it was life or death, um, this child had um, seizures, um, and one of the things that would stop those seizures, or if not stop them, combat them drastically, is um, a certain active ingredient that you get from marijuana. But that was here in Indiana. What happened was that the dad was on his way to Colorado. I, I can't recall if he made it to Colorado or not. But due to the fact that it's not legal here and he had to commit felonies to get that medicine, um, that child died. And I can't help but thinking if that child would have had easier access to this medicine, then the chances are she would have been alive and the chances are she would have been alive today. And so I'm not a doctor. I don't know the exact um, situation, but it just seems like with all this information, you have to at ver the very least support medical marijuana because that's um 
that's something that could save lives. And um, it's I, I don't see the reason to be hesitant about something that's um, life-saving. Um, number two, in the wars. Um, I know, I'm not naive, I understand that there is a huge necessity for our military and huge necessity for us to um, combat in certain situations. But it would just seem that today, a lot, if not all of the conflicts that we are involved in are not because of security and are not because of freedom, but are in fact because of economic reasons. I feel like we are in a lot of uh, Middle East regions because of our interest in the oil we can extract from them and not only that our geopolitical control within the region so yeah that's you could argue that that geopolitical control translates over to security and freedom but at the end of the day i still think it's just an excuse for people to use to um get their hands on what's initially theirs um number one medicare for all I don't see why in one of the richest, most developed nations in the world, we can't provide basic health care for its citizens. Um, every other developed nation has some type or some form or another of Medicare for all. So it just, it seems strange to me that after all this time, after all this research, that we still have to fight and we still have to debate for the idea of covering the citizens of one of the richest, one of the most developed nations in the world. Because every other developed nation has some form, one type or another. So if we're going to consider ourselves a developed nation, then we need to act like one. Thanks for listening. God bless. Peace.